The Nun franchise has established itself as a strong presence in the darkly lighted hallways of horror films, sending shivers down the spines of moviegoers worldwide. With the popularity of its predecessors, excitement for The Nun 3 has reached fever pitch. Fans anxiously anticipating the next episode in this unsettling drama have been promised a first look, a tantalizing glance inside filmmaker Michael Shee's sinister universe. Moreover, if The Nun 3 is made, Bonnie Arons will almost certainly reprise her role as the habit-wearing demon Valak, and Jonas Bloke will return as the possessed vessel Maurice. The character continuity provides a recognizable, spine-chilling presence that has grown iconic in the horror genre. However, Tysa Farmiga's comeback as Sister Irene is doubtful. The uncertainty derives from a post credit sequence in The Nun 2 in which the Warrens get a phone call, presumably about Maurice. This plot twist implies a possible time leap for The Nun 3, indicating a shift away from Sister Irene's plotline and toward Maurice's encounter with the Warrens. The expected shift in focus opens up exciting opportunities for the actors. If the plot revolves around Maurice meeting the Warrens, it opens the way for Vera Farmiga to reprise her role as Lorraine Warren and Patrick Wilson to reprise his role as Ed Warren. The possibility of these seasoned performers reprising their roles adds layers of dimension to the story, interweaving Valak's horrific universe with the Warrens' paranormal investigations. The plan cast for The Nun 3 includes Bonnie Ahrens as the demon Valak, Jonas Bloquet as Maurice, Vera Farmiga as Lorraine Warren, Patrick Wilson as Ed Warren, and Tysa Farmiga's return as Sister Irene. The enthralling combination of returning and maybe new characters promises a fascinating continuation of the horror narrative, with the Warrens potentially taking centre stage in the struggle against the malicious powers hiding in the shadows. Fans can expect a seamless combination of old characters and fresh viewpoints as the cast roster takes shape, guaranteeing that The Nun 3 maintains the spine-chilling fascination that has distinguished the franchise. Now, let's talk about the storyline. The Nun 3 looks to be on track to solve the mystery surrounding Maurice, Valak and the Warrens, diving into the narrative complexities of the late 1960s meeting. The plot is supposed to shed light on the confusing revival of Valak's control over Maurice, despite the fact that the demon seemed to die in flames during its final encounter with Sister Irene. The circumstances leading up to this strange comeback may be traced back to The Nun 2, when Valak absorbed the holy relic of St. Lucy's eyes in a mighty display of strength. This macabre empowerment transformed Valak into an invincible force, summoning goat demons and unleashing a terrible show of energy and fire. Despite her increased power, Sister Irene was able to expel the demon, presumably freeing Maurice from its grip. However, when the intricate network of the Conjuring world unravels, viewers familiar with the chronological order of events know that Maurice falls a victim to Valak once again when the Warrens meet him in the 1960s. The reappearance of possession raises fascinating concerns regarding what brought Maurice back to Valak's malicious clutches and what drove the Warrens to act. The Nun 3 is prepared to confront these puzzling occurrences, which will necessitate a detailed examination of the narrative that connects Maurice's alleged release from Valak and his subsequent possession in the 1960s. The story must untangle the nuances of Valak's perseverance, its capacity to persevere in the face of seeming loss, and the causes that reignited its interest in Maurice as a vessel. Theories abound, providing speculative views into what happened between the ferocious exorcism and Maurice's return to Valak's grasp. Perhaps invisible powers combined to revive Valak, or perhaps fragments of the demon remained, waiting for the right opportunity to attack. Alternatively, during their paranormal investigations, the Warrens may have accidentally roused a dormant malevolence, attracting Valak's attention back to Maurice. The Nun 3 plot theories, the narrative twists in The Nun 2 have left fans pondering the enigmatic sword mark on Maurice's neck, an unexplained detail that holds the promise of unraveling deeper mysteries within the conjured realms of the franchise. Concurrently, the revelation surrounding St. Lucy's demise at the hands of pagans adds a layer of intrigue, hinting at a clandestine group harboring animosity towards clairvoyance. In the intricate web of the Conjuring universe, the emergence of Valak is seldom arbitrary. The 2018 film The Nun traced the demon's origins to the Dark Ages, where a duke obsessed with the occult first summoned Valak. This initial invocation led to a subsequent sealing by Christian knights wielding the blood of Jesus Christ. However, 
The demons released during World War II, triggered by bombings that ruptured its seal, set the stage for the events in the inaugural installment of The Nun. Given the film's conclusion with Valak being banished back to hell, the burning question arises, who will summon the demon once again? Enter the intriguing theory that Maurice holds a significant history with a covert organization dedicated to the worship of Valak. The peculiar sword mark on Maurice's neck becomes a linchpin in this theory, suggesting a symbiotic relationship with this secret society. The mark, rather than an arbitrary detail, is posited as a deliberate symbol, a conduit through which Valak can reclaim a human vessel upon its summoning. This clandestine organization, shrouded in mystery, becomes a pivotal element in the speculative narrative of The Nun 3. It introduces the possibility of a shadowy antagonist, an entity manipulating events from the shadows, potentially orchestrating Valak's return to wreak havoc. The Mark on Maurice, then, transforms into a sinister insignia, emblematic of a pact or allegiance forged in the name of the demon. As the narrative unfolds, the secret organization could ascend from the shadows to confront the Warrens, adding a layer of complexity and intrigue to the overarching storyline. The clash between the forces, allied with Valak and the paranormal investigators, sets the stage for a thrilling expansion of the franchise. The enigma surrounding this group, their motives, and their connection to Maurice creates an atmospheric backdrop for the impending horrors that await. In essence, the theory surrounding Maurice's connection to a secret organization devoted to Valak transforms the unexplained details in The Nun 2 into a tantalizing premise for The Nun 3. The mark on Maurice's neck becomes a key to unlocking a sinister alliance, ushering in a new chapter in the demonic saga. With the potential introduction of this clandestine group, the franchise takes a bold step into uncharted territory, offering fans an enticing blend of mystery, horror, and the supernatural, a concoction that could solidify the Nun series as a standout addition to the horror genre. With that, let's move on to the burning question, is there a spin-off? The Nun franchise's growing popularity, which stems from its beginnings in the Conjuring series, has spurred constant speculation regarding the potential of a third chapter. Though no definite facts regarding The Nun 3 have been revealed, fans were given a ray of optimism when The Nun 2 director Michael Chavez hinted during an interview last month. Chavez stated that The Nun 3 may act as a narrative bridge between The Conjuring and The Nun 2, providing a new viewpoint on the eerie universe. Chavez stressed the decade-long gap between the events of the 2013 film and The Nun 2 in this reveal to SFX magazine. While the former takes place in the late 1960s, the latter takes place in 1956 in France. This time difference provides the framework for the Nun 3 to enter the picture and elaborate on the story. I wouldn't want to give anything away, Chavez explained, but this is continuing the timeline. Anyone who has seen The First Conjuring knows that Maurice is possessed and then exorcised by the Warrens, which occurs in the late 1960s in The Conjuring chronology. We're still a long way from it because this is set in the 1950s. The events of what happens in between these start to fill out that story a little bit more. He teased fans further. There are other major concepts and big swings in there, as well as a lot of intriguing easter eggs. It continues to fill both the image and the larger canvas without giving anything away. Regarding the enigmatic antagonist Valak, the evil nun who haunts the nun films, Chavez delivered a cryptic hint that hints Valak's everlasting presence. In the film, there's a phrase that says, demons are limitless. I enjoy the concept that she's always been present in many incarnations. I believe there are still more stories to be told about Valak, the demon nun. As these mysteries deepen in The Nun 3, will the Warrens conquer new terrors or will darkness prevail? Anticipation awaits. Thanks for watching this video and please don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel.